believe in the Word of God. This is our foundation. This is our manual, how to live, how to, how to go through dark times, how to, how to stand when things aren't going your way. And that's what the Bible does. It teaches you who God is, His character, His heart. And that's why you have to get to know Him mm -hmm. more so than even receiving your miracle. Welcome to Bible Connection, the podcast where we talk about the Bible and how it connects to every facet of life imaginable. Welcome to Bible Connection. My name is Philip Nation. I get to be your host today. Uh, every day I get to wake up and be the Bible publisher for Thomas Nelson Bibles. It is just the greatest adventure of my life. It's a really good gig if you can ever get it. <laughs> and every episode of Bible Connection, we want to connect with uh, an individual who's a leader in the Christian community, somebody who's living out their faith in a special way uh, so that we can help you uh, on your journey of engaging with Scripture to hear what God is doing in their life, how He has been moving with grace uh, throughout the years of their lives, and then maybe even a little bit about their journey currently of how they're engaging with the Scriptures. And so today on Bible Connection, I've got the opportunity to introduce you uh, to someone who you probably already know, and that is C.C. Winans. <laughs> It's really Hello. great to have you. Good to be here. Good well, to be here. Well, uh, everybody needs to know a little bit more about you. So I want to embarrass you for <laughs> just a moment because already I can tell you got a nice, uh, beautiful, humble spirit about you. But I wrote down a couple of statistics, okay. a few things about you. Uh, you are the best selling and most award uh, winning female gospel artist of all time. I mean, that's, it's, it's got to be kind of a strange thing to wake up every day and, and hear those kind of accolades. Oh, but we've all benefited from the fact that uh, of the ministry that you've had, and I found out that during your musical career, you've mm -hmm. sold 17 million albums. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have 17 million of anything. Uh, maybe I've consumed 17 million calories over the course of my life. I've definitely done that, I'm sure. <laughs> but what what is it like to to have gone on that kind of journey and be able to look back and say, you know, of being able to say, maybe just possibly the Lord's allowed me to have that kind of impact? Um, wow, it's it's no it's not it's no maybe to it. No maybe to it. Um, it's definitely been God, yeah. you know, um, started out singing professionally, probably the age of 17, Okay. if not younger, maybe 16. And um, you're just living every day. Yeah. You know, I'm a believer who happens to sing, you know, and the Lord continue to open up doors and people continue to allow us to be a part of their lives, mm -hmm. allow us to be in their cars and in their homes and in their churches, you know, and um, and then you look back and say, whoa, how did that happen? You know, it, 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 it was the Lord every step of the way. Well, and it's been so rewarding for me that as I've gotten ready for this conversation, mm -hmm. uh, I had to do some of that internet stalking that every interviewer <laughs> does, yeah. but to have watched you in those moments mm -hmm. when you accepted those awards, because mm -hmm. you have won 12 Grammys, yeah. And 23 Dove Awards and 15 Stellar Awards. But in all of those moments, mm -hmm. you took it as the opportunity to make sure that you were reflecting all of the glory and the praise to God. Mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, those are tempt those are moments that are <laughs> just absolutely fraught with temptation, but it's good to see a sister in the faith mm -hmm. just continuously say, I get to sing. That's the gift that God gave me, but I want to make sure that people know it's the gift God gave me. Yeah. What is it like in that moment when the applause just roars up mm -hmm. at the giving of an award and you have those 30 seconds to make yeah. that, that statement? Yeah, well, you want to make those 30 seconds count, mm. you know. Um, and and I, I've always understood that every platform that God has given me was not for me, mm. but it was for Him. And so when you get a chance to speak to so many people at one time, you want to make sure that the glory goes to Him. I want to make sure yeah. because it is because of His kindness and His mercy and His love and, and really the gospel in gospel music is the reason why I'm standing there, yeah. you know? So I want to remind people that Jesus is real, that He loves them. 
leave them with something that they can actually grab hold to mm -hmm. and, and remember. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I pray every time that I say something that that is eternal. Yeah. And then you've had this wide array of places mm -hmm. where you have been able to sing and lead people in worship from the White House to yeah. before the Pope. Yeah. And then I just try to begin to imagine the numerous churches globally mm -hmm. from small to yeah. large, from rural to mega city, that, that no matter where you've been, it's still this one message that you have tried to make sure resonated to those people. Yeah, amen, amen. Uh, I tell people all the time, it's like if they invite me to come, they, they know what I stand for and they know why I'm coming. <laughs> But, but it's an honor and a privilege. And yes, I've been on all different types of stages, different places in front of different people with different beliefs. But, but I believe in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I know that the message I bring always brings hope. Mm. It always uplifts people. And what a privilege it is yeah. to sing the good news, mm -hmm. you know, because people need it. Yeah. So this longevity that mm -hmm. you, I mean, you're still a young woman. But this, but, <laughs> yeah, kind of a different young. <laughs> but you've had a longevity uh -huh. through a career of music and ministry. And, and so it is this hope, it is this good news. Mm -hmm. What happens in the quiet, private moments of CeCe Winans' life that, that keep you anchored down into why you're doing this over a few decades of ministry. Yeah, over 40 years, I wow. think I've been doing public ministry. Um, it's, it's the private time in the Word of God. It is the Word of God. That's it. We can like drop the mic right here. <laughs> um, but but it's, it's understanding that my relationship with Jesus is most important. And it's, and it's giving out of that overflow of my relationship with him. So spending time in the word, spending time meditating mm -hmm. in the word, spending time in my local church. I can't stress enough the importance of a local church. You know, I've always before, I mean, we've been pastoring now for a few years, but way before that, you know, I would always be sitting right there on Sunday morning, you know, and, and made sure that my schedule didn't take me away too long, but the importance of being there on Sunday, being there for Bible study, being at prayer, all of that is, is why I'm still here today. Yeah. Well, and it really does shine through so many, if not all, I, I guess I should say, of the lyrics that you have written and that mm -hmm. you sing and and for those of us who, which, are, you know, it's the 99.99% of the rest of us that are not singing for a living mm -hmm. uh, as our vocation, mm -hmm. but we, we all know people that they always have a song on their heart. They've always got, they're always humming a tune. Mm -hmm. And I think about so many of the lyrics that you've delivered to us through radio and through worship events and through conferences and... Uh, and recently, one of the songs that has been quite popular from you yeah. is the song Believe For It. Yeah. And I, I actually wrote down a, uh, a couple of lines of uh, the song that when it gets to this point is always my high point, uh, even though I don't have any, there's nothing <laughs> high about my voice, but emotionally the high point where uh, the lyrics say, you are the way when there mm. seems to be no way. Yeah. We trust in you, God. You have the final say. Yes. And then, of course, that chorus, move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe uh, for it. Love it. So while you've been out on the road, I, I would suspect that there are people who come in tears in those moments that you get to meet people who are in the room with mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. as you're... As you're singing, but essentially leading in worship. Mm -hmm. I mean, have there been particular stories or moments when you've sung that live that yeah. have just been etched in your memory? Yeah, um, it's, it's funny you would ask me that question today because just a few weeks ago, we 
did a concert in Arkansas. And before we went out on stage, they gave me a note from um, parents who their daughter, they had, the note said, we're so glad we're able to come because you were only four hours away. Only four hours wow. away. Our daughter has been diagnosed with, um, it was a certain type of cancer. And she's here tonight and we just, we're holding on to believe for it. Yeah. And because I think the cancer was like stage four, mm. you know. They, they came expecting. And uh, I talked to my band and singers before we went out. And I said, I want to read this to you guys because I want you to always understand that when we go out here, people have not come to see us. But they've come to see Jesus. Mm. It's not about us. And I read the letter from the young girl, I mean, from her parents. And uh, we sang that song that night. And, and uh, I, I had her stand up and I brought her to the front and I asked every believer, every praying believer to reach out towards her and let's pray. Let's pray that God will heal her. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just so powerful to say, you know, you said it, I believe it and it's done, you know, and, and to speak to the mountain and command it to move because we do serve a God of the impossible, mm -hmm. you know? And as believers, that's what we do. We believe and we believe in the word of God. This is our foundation. This is our manual, how to live, how to, how to go through dark times, how to, how to stand when things aren't going your way, you know? Um, and how to just trust God's character. And that's what the Bible does. It teaches you who God is, his character, his heart. And that's why you have to get to know him mm -hmm. more so than even receiving your miracle. Yeah. The miracle of knowing him is still the greatest miracle ever that we could ever experience. And so that that was a powerful night. I don't think I've sensed the anointing so strong recently as I felt it that night, you know, and um, I did. I don't know them. I haven't talked to them since. But but I just believe that God did something that only he could do that night. And, and, and that song is just so powerful. So yes, to hear the testimonies that have come in from that song and people in tears and people thanking me, um, I'm just humbled by it. Yeah, it's what a great gift to be able to yeah. carry that message yeah. that the Lord has graced you with. And, mm -hmm. and we're grateful that you've been willing to do it with this type of, of humility that mm -hmm. it's, you know, I'm gonna put the word first in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have Christ be center of who I am. Yeah. And the, even that moment of discipleship with very trusted friends that are your, that sing with you and play mm -hmm. instruments with mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. that just becomes that reminder of, this is why we're out here this every night. This is why we do what we do. You know? I read my Bible regularly, but there were times when it felt like I was just reading words on a page, like I wasn't really hearing from God the way some people talk about. And I wanted more than that. I wanted to do more than just read the Bible. I wanted to experience God's love through His Word. But I needed help. Help to hear from God and see His love for me. To better understand God's character and actions. To study the Bible in a way that helped me see the truth more clearly. And when that happened, I started to feel like I was actually hearing from God in the Word. And not just to know what He wants me to do in light of Scripture, but that He loves me. And that love isn't just about me. It's a love that connects me to women like me and women different from me. Women who are trying to live faithfully in our situations. Women who want to understand the Bible and hear from God through it. Women who all want the same thing to love God with our whole lives. Dig deep into God's Word and know His love for you with the Love God Greatly Bible. Get your copy at lovegodgreatlybible.com today. At the time that we're having this conversation, Shortly, in, in the next couple of weeks, uh, you've got a single that's being released called I've Got Joy. Yeah. And, and, and I think about, you know, the mass chaos 
that we've been in <laughs> for the last few years yes, of global pandemic and war around the world. And who would have ever thought that um, in 2020, we would have had a thing in the United States called murder hornets that were like the least of our worries at this point. Mm -hmm. And and so, but here you are rolling out a song called I've Got Joy yeah, in the midst of when people are struggling, struggling. to try to find a handhold and an yeah. anchor. And yeah. so, you know, what... What's a little bit of the background behind a song like that and how you carry it to people that you know parents are struggling, you know, people are getting unexpected diagnoses, right. you know, job loss, mm -hmm. war around the world. <laughs> and and yet you look into the scriptures and you say, but we still have joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says in his presence, there's fullness of joy. Mm. And so it is <laughs> that again. It's what a him. great gift to carry out to yeah, the world. For. Yeah, and and it's and it's. I think it's it's the perfect time for this song. Mm. I've got joy, because, like you said, looking out, listening to the news, seeing what's happening in everybody's life, different circumstances, you're you're not going to find joy there. <laughs> and during these times, there's only one place you will find joy. Yeah. And that is in the Word of God. That is in Jesus. He is the answer. And again, only reason you can have that joy is having His presence, having that relationship, and knowing that if I leave here tomorrow, I'm getting upgraded, you know? <laughs> <laughs> As a believer, you just don't lose. Yeah. There's no losing in Him. And, and that's, the, that's where the joy comes from. And also having the joy even outwardly, inwardly and outwardly. The Bible says, happy is he who trusts in the Lord. And, and I can laugh, you know, after, you know, it's funny because I have a grand, my, my first grandson, he's about 14 months. And it's amazing how he can, he can switch from being so disappointed to happy the next minute. He's forgotten about the sorrow. And, and it's not that as believers, we don't go through sorrow. It's not, we, we're not exempt from pain, um, but it's because of us knowing that he's with us, mm -hmm. that you can go through some of the darkest moments. You know, even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. You know, knowing that Jesus is with me, um, keeps me at an even place mm -hmm. of knowing that everything will be all right. As crazy as things are, all things work together for my good. Yeah. You know? Well, it's so refreshing to, to be with somebody and have this kind of conversation because obviously your mind and your heart, you've soaked them in the Word, and it comes so easily into the middle of your conversations. Mm -hmm. And so it, it does make me think about another thing that's upcoming for you, the generations conference because yeah. you have this deep desire not just to be the person on the platform talking about Jesus and talking about his word this generations conference is you want to make sure from the the title of it that generation after generation yes. is passing this down so tell us a little bit about yes. this event that's going to take place yes well well I started doing this show generations on YouTube with my daughter mm -hmm. and my mom now, my mom comes in when she feels like it at this point. I was like, you can do that. You're 85. You don't have to be here all the time. Whenever you come, we'll, we'll just get that wisdom. But, but I, what I was sharing with that audience and the reason why I want to do a live event and that we're doing the live event on May 6th and 7th um, is because I'm here today because my mother gave me her baton of faith. Mm -hmm. If she had not taken out the time and those that the mothers of the church and those who went on before me, if they didn't take out the time to teach me the word, to live it out in front of me, um, I wouldn't be here today, you know? And, and I, was, I was a part of a, a panel the other day and I heard this statement and it just pierced my heart. She was just saying that whatever our generation makes optional, then the next generation will deem it as unnecessary. And I had never heard it put like that. And it was just like, oh my God. So, so yes, I have a, a, a responsibility and I feel the urgency to make sure that my daughter 
and that my grandson and not just them, but all of my spiritual daughters, the, that next generation, that I'm passing something on to them, this faith, mm -hmm. so that when I'm gone, they're strong, yeah. you know? And, and I think we all have to look at our lives and say, okay, are we eating the word and are we giving it out? Who's pouring into you and who are you pouring into? Because if not, we can complain all day about having a godless nation, mm -hmm. but who are we preparing? Are we preparing the next generation yeah. with the word of God? Well, and, and so that's what this conference is about. Yeah. You know, that we come in and that we make sure that each generation is prepared to stand on the word of God. Well, and it's something that feels like such a natural extension of what God has been doing with you and mm -hmm. how you've prepared yourself by your private walk with Christ and your public walk with Christ to be able to stand and say, look what I've inherited and look what I'm trying to pass along. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how God has worked in, in these three generations and mm -hmm. how He could do that in yours. Yeah. And that's been replicated though on a very weekly basis as you and your family, your mm -hmm. husband, mm -hmm. ha have planted a church, yeah. Nashville Life Church. Yeah, Nashville Life Church. So that's Nashville, an interesting Tennessee. journey that <laughs> maybe not everybody knows about yeah. of your of your dedication to a local family of faith of building one up. So how did it start? Give us the quick, like, the quick. how did this happen and what's going on lately? Wow, my husband was given the word that he would be a pastor. Neither one of us believed it. <laughs> But God made it very plain, and He actually birthed it out through my son, Alvin the Third, um, with his friends. He came to us and said, "Can we do a Bible study with some of my friends?" He had went to um, Melbourne, Australia, actually to run from his parents, probably and run from God. But God, in His faithfulness, the Bible says that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Amen. He got over there and God got a hold to him in a good way and he got f saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. He knew God, but he wasn't on fire for God. Came back here to Nashville, inviting his friends and, and, and family to, to talk about the Lord. He got people feel, I mean, saved and filled with, he was just on fire for God. And he wanted to do a Bible study at our church and that's how Nashville Life, I mean, at our home, and that's how our church was birthed. So God actually used my son to birth out our church. And we, we said yes to the Lord, to the call. And uh, my husband and I are the founding pastors now. We pastored for eight years and Last year, this time, we gave it over to our son, and now he's our lead pastor. Wow. So we have, um, yeah, we've been discipling, making disciples, making disciples. Jesus told us to go and make disciples. And, and you don't have to be a pastor to make disciples. We all have yeah. been given that, that great commission to do that. And, um, and so it's been awesome. It's, been, it's, been, it's, it's, it's ongoing. It never stops, but, but it gives me so much joy. So... Let me ask you, as, as you know, our conversation, mm -hmm. we want to help the people that are listening in mm -hmm. to connect with the scriptures in the way that that is this joyful kind of engagement that mm -hmm. I think you put on display so well for us. What, do you, what counsel do you give to people who they say, I just feel ill-equipped? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know where Genesis is from Galatians. <laughs> Everybody keeps talking about some book called Habakkuk. I don't even know where that is. What do you say to, to people who are at the beginning or mm -hmm. they have, they've wandered away and they're trying to come back? What kind of counsel do you give to folks when they say, I just want to start engaging yeah, God again with easy. His Word. What do I do? Yeah, well, there's so many things you can do and there's so many easy things you can do, especially nowadays. Yeah. They have everything from the Bible app to doing short little um devotions, you know, that, that, that have the commentary that goes along with the Word of God. So nowadays, I really think anybody can not just, uh, I mean, can just read the Bible, but actually get an understanding and get the excitement from the Word. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the, book, the Bible is one of the, not one, it is the most exciting book you could ever read. I mean, really, you don't have to watch a movie. You don't have to do any of that. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's all in there, all yeah. the different stories that are so exciting and so awesome. And um, so, so going to a local church, I think, is real important. And then sometimes you can just take what you heard on Sunday, go home and reread it, you know, reread that and, and, and get an understanding and, and meditate on that word and, and memorize some of those scriptures in there. Um, and then you have Psalms is just full of praise and worship. And so that's easy to read. Proverbs is easy to read. You get some wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, and so, but, but the stories in the Bible, Daniel, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at these um, cartoons now with my grandson. I think Superbook is, is one of those that we watch. And it's, it's just, he's learning Esther. He's learning all of these incredible stories about David and Goliath. And so it just takes a little bit every day, a little bit. You don't have to know the whole Bible. You don't have to know how to quote everything. And then this is real important too. Invite the Holy Spirit. Mm. Before you read, Holy Spirit, I'm about to read. Give me an appetite for the word. Give me an understanding for the word because it makes a difference. When you, when you open up that Bible and begin to study, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. So, so don't be afraid of it. Just dive in and just do a little at a time and that appetite is gonna to continue to grow. I can't thank you enough because just that wisdom, that godly counsel is gonna help people. Mm, it's, awesome. it's gonna take down some of those barriers and, and that encouragement, that as we go to the Word to say to God, the Holy Spirit, yeah. build my appetite, mm -hmm. give me insight. Uh, such an encouraging word from someone that we've all respected from afar and appreciate Thank so you. much of what God has done through you. So thanks for joining us today for this conversation. I, I have benefited from it. Uh, I'm glad to get to know my sister in yeah, Christ a little bit good better to know today. You too. So thank you so much. You got it, thanks for having me. All right, thanks so much for joining us here on Bible Connection today. We'll see you next time.